I'm Dan Ehrlich for KSMQ Plus, and today we're in Austin talking about the recent June floods. Following a series of persistent rainstorms inundating the area throughout the week, on Saturday, June 22nd, Austin residents awoke to the familiar but most unwelcome sights and sounds and smells of the Cedar River as well as Dobbins and Turtle Creeks breaching their banks and flowing into the city. But according to Austin city engineer, Stephen Lang, things could have been much worse. Our Turtle Creek levees performed very well. Um, we had some water ponding on the backside of the levees in our, in our storage areas where they were supposed to be. Our pumping stations worked well. And overall, our, just our Turtle Creek levees to protect residential property worked, worked really good. Along the North Main project and our flood levee system, uh, we did put in flood barriers behind RNF apartments and water got up on those invisible barriers. Uh, there are also other places along the project like by um, the old uh, Jerry's other place or now Barley's restaurant, water was up on the levee there. Had it not been for the levee, water likely would have been impacting uh, Barley's restaurant and working its way down other flood mitigation efforts implemented since 2004, the year of Austin's biggest flood, included the elimination of homes in the areas most vulnerable to repetitive flooding through buyouts. So along this bike trail, in the old days, there used to be a line of homes on what was called First Street Northeast. Until 2004, when the city finally had enough, the mitigation efforts began. That's when they moved all of these homes out to different locations within the city and they changed this into a bike trail. According to some residents, despite all these efforts, there are still homes within the proximity of the Cedar River that remain vulnerable to flooding, such as this row along 2nd Avenue Northeast. We were supposed to be like the last phase in the project and for some reason they said they ran out of money or something and it never got done and we've had what? I've had three floods where, you know, it's gotten, water's gotten up here since then. So, I mean, that's, I don't understand why, how they ran out of money here. I mean, and then they try, tried buying us out and they sent out letters. Well, they only got like seven letters back of the 20 some. So, yeah, it gets frustrating. Many of those properties there along 2nd Avenue are not in the floodplain. So, that was reviewed and decided to not move forward with that project because of um, properties being outside of the floodplain. Another section of properties in Austin situated well above the floodplain, the southeast and northeast quadrants near Ellis School, suffered heavy damage when the city sewer system backed up, filling basements with as much as three feet of water. This area also has a history of such backups and residents are frustrated. I've been there for 49 years. This is the fifth time that we've had sewer backup in our basements. There's been nothing done to rectify this situation. It started back in the 70s and 80s. Here we are in the 2020s and we've gotten nowhere. There's something happening there that's allowing water during a rain event to get into the system. It's, it has the capacity to work during normal everyday usage, but all of a sudden when there's a rain event, it gets overwhelmed. There's no immediate solution. It is, it's pecking away at small things to try to remove that water. There isn't one thing that we can do even 
today, tomorrow, even in the next 12 months, there isn't one thing that we could do that would solve the entire thing. I heard from one of these residents asking about the city's liability uh, for damages. How does that work in Austin? What is our current system? Typically with a sewer backup, if in a normal situation, if there is a blockage in our sewer main or we can't show that we did our routine maintenance, the city has some liability there. If it's a sewer service, it then falls on the homeowner. In a situation like this where it was mother nature, an act of God, it was a volume of water that is just not designed for, we, we, would, we would never design for that volume of water Anyway, I, I don't believe we would be responsible in a situation like this. League of Minnesota Cities confirmed that with us. Our insurance carrier said this is basically an act of nature and there is one of them exclusions in any policy you might have, even if you had sewer coverage, and this would not be covered by our insurance company. During our interview, I asked Stephen what the future looks like for this area. So we have a project identified in 2025 for the Ellis Ditch Drainage Study. We have $100,000 planned to complete a study in the Ellis Ditch area. And then we have 1.5 million budgeted in 2026 to implement whatever comes from that study. From the Cedar River at Mill Pond in Austin, I'm Dan Ehrlich for KSMQ Plus.